Hey guys, what's up? I'm still around. I thought I'd make a quick science video about pumpkins and I wanted to show you one, a really cool one right now. Check this one out here. Check this guy out. Oh, that's so good. I wish that was mine. You guys want to see my pumpkin? Right here. <laughs> it's hideous. But yeah, I was sick and we were on a time crunch and we didn't have much, many resources, but What's the lesson I wanted to teach you? I wanted to teach you a few things actually here because I have to throw this guy out really soon before he becomes a safety hazard if he's not already a safety hazard. And I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean in a second. First of all, first question is, what's happening to this pumpkin here? What's going on? What's the deal? Well, if you look carefully, you see he doesn't look so good anymore. He looks happy, he's smiling, but he looks way healthier than him. And let me tell you something. We bought them at the same time. This is a fellow teacher of mine, her classroom right there. And this is my pumpkin right here. So we bought them at the same time. He's not doing so well, the other one is. Well, it has to do with this word right here, biodegradable. So this process, when things start rotting and breaking down, this only happens to things that are biodegradable. So what does biodegradable mean? Biodegradable means anything that comes from a living thing. So it could be a plant or it comes from an animal. Those things are biodegradable. So this pumpkin came from a plant, it's biodegradable. That pumpkin came from a plant. So it should be biodegradable, it is. But we'll talk about why he is looking much, much fresher and healthier than him in a second. So the process now, what's actually happening to this pumpkin is he's decomposing, right? So he's He's decomposing, which means, let me put this down there. He's decomposing, which means he is decaying. Let me show you another synonym. Or he's rotting. All three of these words mean the same thing. So we have our pumpkin. Ooh, don't look yet. That's a surprise. We have, he's rotting, he's decaying, he's decomposing, and only biodegradable things can do that, nothing else. Okay, so we've established that already. Let me pick something up. So the next thing I wanna talk about, so we talked about what's actually happening to him. He's breaking down, he's decomposing, he's rotting, he's decaying. All these things mean the same thing. They're basically telling us he's shrinking, he's disappearing very, very slowly. He actually looked all right on day one, but that's been, I think now, five days. Right? So anyway, so we need some things to happen. We need some ingredients. We need things to be present for this to happen. Okay, so remember these next three things. We need air, we need warmth, and we need one more thing. Can you guess what it is? It is moisture. If any of these three things don't exist, this doesn't happen. He looks so happy. I feel bad for him. I don't think he knows what's actually going on inside of him. So let me put these cards down here. So we need moisture. Ooh, what's that thing? Ooh, that's nasty. We have warmth and we need air. When you have all three of these items, then you get rotting, decaying, decomposing, but only if the item is biodegradable. So, for example, if you have a rock, is a rock biodegradable? No, because a rock does not come from a living thing. It doesn't come from a plant or an animal. So rocks that are wet, moist, or warm and, and have air exposure will not rot. They will not decay or decompose because they're not biodegradable. But things like pumpkins or um, any kind of food, essentially, it's gonna to start to rot if you give it these three things. Some of you might be really like wondering what's moisture? Moisture is wetness, okay? So wetness, is a pumpkin wet? Yes, it is. Have you ever tried to put your hand inside of a pumpkin? Yeah, it's pretty nasty, it's pretty gross or slimy. It's got a lot of wetness. Also, built into the skin itself, we have a lot of juices and moisture. So moisture is present there pretty Evidently, but that one has all three as well. Oh my god. He looks so so good Pennywise, so if that pumpkin has moisture and There's air and there's what else? What's the other one? Warmth. Yeah 
And this one has all three. Then why is this one breaking down so quickly? I'm going to get to that. I'm, I'm gonna, I promise I'm going to explain this to you. So let's talk about this guy here a little bit. Um, what's happening? Well, we have air around him. We have warmth around. This is a warm hallway. And we have moisture. Like we said, he's got moisture. So when you have all three things, he's going to start breaking down. If I take away any of these three, if I put them in a vacuum chamber and I suck all the air out and I give him warmth and moisture, but I take the air out, he's going to stay fresh for literally forever. If I give him, let's say, moisture and air, but I get rid of the warmth, then he will not decompose. So let's say I put him in like a deep freezer. He's not going to rot in there because the freezer has no warmth. So it's gonna, he's going to stay fresh. That's why food in the freezer stays good pretty much forever. It'll get freezer burned, but it's not going to rot. Or let's say I suck all the water out of him. I vacuum, or not vacuum pack, but I suck all the water out of him. And I turn him into like this pumpkin jerky. Ew, that's nasty. Then he's not going to rot. That's why beef jerky lasts and lasts and lasts. It's got, like, among other things, it's got no moisture. Um, it's dried up. And even though it has the other two, that third one's missing, it's going to stay fresh. It's not going to decompose. So taking that into consideration, can you tell me why this one is a lot fresher? In fact, let's go up to it. Hello, Pennywise. Oh, my God, he's so cool. Look at that. He's still solid. He's still rock solid. He's fresh as can be. Well, let's talk about it. The air is still warm around him. What else are the other two? There is moisture present. Yes, there is. There's moisture inside. He's pretty gooey in there. And what's the other one? Oh my God, I'm like brain dead. And there's, so we said there's warmth. There's moisture. You know what's missing? The air. Yes, there's air around him, but where's all the wetness? Where's all the moisture? It's inside his skull. It's inside his skull, not on the outside. All the moisture, there's no moisture on the outside. You know if I got a spray gun and I sprayed him on the outside, he would start to rot so fast. But the wetness is on the inside, and on the inside we have wetness and we have warmth. You know what we're missing? We're missing the air. There's no air on the inside. The air is on the outside. Inside his skull, there's no air. I mean, there might be a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, but that's not going to help him rot. Now, eventually he will rot if I leave him there. Okay, eventually the air will catch up uh, on the inside and it'll break him down, but there's very, very little air on the inside. Now, what happens if I slice him open and I let the air go in? Then he will become a rotten pumpkin very quickly like him. So I hope we're understanding this difference here. I cut mine open. My teaching friend did not cut him open, so he is still fresh. Let's talk about the next thing now. What's causing this to happen? Very simply, here's my next card coming up. Sorry, my camera's off frame. Very simply, things called decomposers. Decomposers, which looks like the word decompose, except these are the things that do the decomposing. So what are we talking about? Well, if you look at them, look at them really here. Look, I'm gonna zoom in. What do you, what do you see here? Let me, let me spot. Oh, look, oh my God. They're fruit flies, that's what they are. They're nasty fruit flies. So what they're doing is they're sucking all the juices out and they're breaking the skin down and they're, they're helping shrink him down, okay? And then they lay their eggs inside and make more fruit flies and they help decompose. They're decomposers. There's other type of decomposers. They're called worms. Now we don't have any worms here, but you know flies? Flies are not fruit flies, but like, like the black flies that you see flying around. What they do, if there were any flies around here, they would actually go in there, they would lay their eggs, and little, little fly worms will hatch. They're called maggots. And then they start eating and eating and breaking down the inside. It's really gross and nasty. It's disgusting, but it's true. Um, so that's, that's kind of what would happen there. Um, so they are decomposers as well, worms. And different kind of worms will like prefer things like, they, they decompose, they help break it down. So we, oops, my cards are falling. And so we have fruit flies, they're decomposers. 
they're decomposers. We have also bacteria. Let me write this down. Bacteria, let me put it down here. Bacteria are decomposers. Now, bacteria, you can't see bacteria. They are so small that you need powerful microscopes to zoom in to see them. But you know what bacteria love about this pumpkin? Bacteria will think this is the most delicious snack ever and they start, they start absorbing it into their bodies and making more bacteria and then becomes a bacteria party and they just start absorbing everything they can from this, shrinking it down. And we have another type of decomposer that is called mold or fungus. Mold is a type of fungus. You could see mold. Mold is gross. Mold, mold is fuzzy. It's round. It grows on the inside. It needs all that moisture, warmth, and air. I'm going to show you some mold. It's really gross. Check it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Here it is. Here it is. Oh my God, that is disgusting. Now guys, don't worry about the pink. That's just hairspray. I thought it'd be a good idea to keep the fruit flies out, but they did not care. They just kept coming after I sprayed it with pink hairspray. Uh, but what I want you to pay attention to, see all that white stuff and all those black circles? Those are all mold. That's all mold. It's all mold growth. And what mold is, mold is everywhere. Like it's in the air. It's all over. Like it's, it's flying around the air right now. You can't really see it. It's so small. You can't see it. But when it lands on stuff like this and it has moisture, warmth, and air, it will actually grow on it and it'll suck the nutrients into its body to make itself grow bigger and make the pumpkin grow smaller until there's nothing left except a pile of compost. Have you ever guys played that game worm.io? Wor no, sorry, slither.io. That's when all the worms eat the other. Well, what happens when a worm eats another worm in slither.io? Well, the worm that gets eaten is gone, but the worm that eats it gets bigger. Then the more worms it eats, the bigger and bigger the worm gets. It's the same thing that's happening over here. This fungus will absorb all the yummy, delicious, to us it's disgusting, to us it's like a party. It'll absorb as much of the nutrients as it possibly can to make itself bigger and then make the pumpkin get smaller. And it'll spread pretty fast. That's why I need to throw this out because it's like it's, it's, this mold will, is actually a safety hazard. You don't want to be breathing in all the spores that it releases in the air to spread itself everywhere else. So I have to dispose of it pretty soon. And eventually, these decomposers, the mold, the fungus, the bacteria, the fruit flies, the... Where's the other one? Um, mold. I'm losing my mind. Oh, here we go. The worms, they work as a team together. The worms, the fungus mold, the bacteria, the fruit flies, they work as a team to break down biodegradable, biodegradable things to turn them into compost. And all compost is, is the leftover of this when it's done breaking down and it won't break down any further. And then it doesn't even look like a pumpkin anymore. It just looks like a pile of compost, which you can mix in the soil and it actually makes the soil super healthy. So compost is the final product of this decomposition. Now, after all this, a lot of people have questions. So one question people have is right here. Is decomposition a good or bad thing? Well, decomposition is actually... It could be bad or good. So, for example, if I'm eating a steak and that steak has mold growing on it and it's decomposing, that's a bad thing. I don't want my steak molding on me, right? So, but if, let's say, a squirrel gets hit on the side of the road, then do I really want that squirrel body to stay there forever? Or do I want things in the environment to break it down so it disappears and turns into earth again, compost? Yeah, of course I want that to happen. Um, so, yeah, uh, decomposition overall is a really good thing for most cases. Um, we want things to decompose when they die or when they're all used up, like this pumpkin here. Here's another really good question I've been asked before after teaching this. We've got moisture, warmth, and air in our bodies, right? We have water in our bodies, we have warmth, we have air in our body, right? Ah, that air is breathing it in, it's going in our body. 
Why then aren't we decomposing? That's an awesome question. The reason for that is because we have something else in our body called an immune system. The same thing that fights colds and germs and the flu and all that nasty stuff that tries to attack your body and sicknesses and though that immune system in our body fights off those diseases. So yeah, we do have fungus trying to get into our body right now to try to take us over and decompose us. But we also have an immune system that fights it off. Like me, I'm getting over a sickness. I had, I had like a really nasty cold or flu. I don't even know, it was bad on Friday, right? Those germs wanna take over my body and, and break me down. But you know what happens? My immune system comes and fights it off so I get better again. If we didn't have an immune system, yeah, we'd have a serious problem on our hands and we wouldn't survive very long at all. And here's the final question I get. What would happen if decomposers did not exist? If decomposers didn't exist, what would happen? If they didn't, well, let's, let's think about it. Then things wouldn't break down anymore. Then things would stay fresh forever and ever and ever. Do you want a dead squirrel on the side of a highway or dead bodies um, to last forever? Or do we want them to recycle back into the earth? Well, if decomposers didn't exist, everything would stay fresh forever and nothing would rot when it died. And that's an awful thing because think of all the things that have lived, all the plants and animals that have lived in history. If nothing was there to decompose them, those bodies would stay fresh forever after they passed away. So decomposers are so important for our world. We need them. This video has gone 17 minutes, guys. I'm gonna wrap it up right here. I hope you weren't too disgusted. You know what's so funny with this? Those are voting tickets. I was absent because I was sick until like today, but those are voting. Actually, three people voted my pumpkin to be better than this pumpkin. <laughs> That's hilarious. I have no idea. I have no idea. But like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even vote for this. Would you? Oh, anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Staying safe. It's the day after Halloween. Catch you guys later. If you have any questions, just drop them below. I'll be happy to answer them. Take care, guys. Stay healthy.